if Daniel Jeremiah feels that there are no draft trades tonight, and obviously he could be off, he could be wrong, um, then, you know, it, it will, however, not be for the lack of trying mm -hmm. for any teams to go and make some phone calls and create some wild 10-minute moments while, say, the Patriots are on the clock at three deciding do they take Drake May or do they take J.J. McCarthy or do they trade out of the pick for either uh, uh, franchises that want either of those two quarterbacks. What are the Arizona Cardinals doing? So on and so forth. So I want to ask you first, T.J. Jefferson, which draft room would you want to be in tonight if you could to be a fly on the wall okay. for a draft day and draft room debate? Which one would you want to be on? I mean, I think the obvious answer is the Cowboys, but we would know that, so I'm not going to say choose, them. We yeah, can't choose our, our team. I, I right? don't want to choose right. them. So, I mean, this is pretty simple, too. The Bears. Look, the, you've got to pick number one. This mm -hmm. is going to change the course of your franchise, you're hoping, right? I've got two huge Bear fans in, in my friend group, and I know they can't wait for the night. Which one is that? Uh, the Chicago Bears? No, the the friend in your in who's in your friend group. Which one? Just say his name. Is it, Why do you not say his name? We all know you're friends with him. It's well established. By the way, this is my favorite bit. It's been going on for four you years, and it's never going to end. Name. I love it so much. His name is Justin Mooney. Is one of no, the friends? No, no, no. The oh. other one. The other one. Nobody's ever heard of Justin Mooney. Oh, that's that's oh. disrespectful Just, a little no. bit. Uh, his, I'm his, just kidding. His, his name's Ashton Kutcher. That's the hey. guy. Hey. Okay, yeah, so he's a big Bear fan, as we know. Did a little so, part of him just die? I, I, yes. Uh, you're closer Actually, to him than said, I am. He said his whole name, too, which is... <laughs> Okay. He's still alive. <laughs> but, nah, but so, you know, I think the ghost of Trubisky is still hanging over that franchise, so they want to get this but pick But what's right. the debate, do you think? So I, I think the debate comes down to nine, right? What do right. you do with that second pick? Do you give him another weapon yep. in the form of maybe Roma Dunze, or do you solidify the offensive line? Do you maybe hope Joe Alt's there? Do you go defense? What do they do with this second pick? Because this is – do you trade the pick to get more picks? Well, I predicted that in my mock draft, yeah, that, right, that Malik right. Neighbors is going to sit there at nine, and I instead remember. of handing Malik Neighbors uh, in to, to, um, to Caleb Williams mm -hmm. in, in, the, uh, in the huddle, um, they're going to maybe trade out. And yeah, so the pos they have a lot of possibilities. This could be the chance for the Bears to really make that, that jump that make that next step so I'd be interested to see what they're going to do what Ryan Poles is going to do in that draft room and make you know Ashton and, and Justin very happy well Daniel Jeremiah says they're going to stick and pick and they're going to keep um, that pick and go Olu Fashanu the tackle out of Penn State which also another, and add to their offensive line that would be the move I would think you right. got to protect Caleb at which all costs. which is the draft room you, it's, you would want to be funny. I'm on. sticking in the NFC North and I'm looking at the Minnesota Vikings they have two first round picks we know 11 23 they don't have a second or third round pick in this draft so what do they do do they move up so many rumors surrounding this team if Drake May goes number two to Washington could they be on the phone with New England uh, are they trying to trade up are they going to stick D DJ has them sticking and JJ McCarthy falls to them that I think is a home run 10 out of 10 scenario for Minnesota and Kevin O'Connell. We know the roll in the dice with Sam Darnold this year, so no pressure on whatever quarterback they draft to start right away. Uh, could they package and move up? Like I said, I don't know, but I think there's a lot of intrigue with Minnesota because if you look at what they have, they're a team that can contend for this division and, and, and be kind of legitimate uh, forces in the NFC if they get these picks right today. And that, that – leads me to the place where I would want to go and be, and that's the Arizona Cardinals draft room tonight. Because Monty Ossenfort, the general manager who last year was in the three spot, traded out with Houston and then traded back in to go get Paris Johnson, the, the offensive lineman from Ohio State. He is well known to move around a draft board in the top 10 picks. And he has said he will not entertain any draft offers until he is on the clock mm -hmm. tonight. And the reason for that is, is I guess he wants to know which of the quarterbacks didn't go in the first three. And what does that mean for him and who would be willing to come and pay a king's ransom for that guy? Mm -hmm. And is that possibly Drake May? It's entirely feasible the reason why you didn't choose New England is because we have decided that you can't right. choose your own team to be in the draft room. 
when New England's on the clock at three. It's going to be nuts. And they don't tra- take Drake May. They take, say, J.J. McCarthy instead. Or just saying that the ultimate craziness, if Drake May goes two and Jaden Daniels goes three and J.J. McCarthy's there at four or the Patriots choose McCarthy because they love him and Jaden Daniels is sitting there at four, that would mean the Las Vegas Raiders would just go absolutely crazy and be one of the teams to call up Monty Austin Ford and start making some crazy trade offers. It's possible that the Minnesota Vikings would do that as well. It's possible that they just stick and pick because it is Marvin Harrison Jr. that's sitting right mm-hmm. there. You know and how we, we feel about him. And we, we know how we feel about him. And I'm sure Kayla, Kyler Murray feels very strongly <laughs> about him as well. And so you'd be able to get your quarterback protected from last year's movement over the draft board. And now your quarterback having one of the best weapons we've seen from so many observers coming out of college for Kyler Murray and all of those things happening in the span of 10 minutes, that would be a wild scenario. And, you know, uh, Daniel Jeremiah is going to be again joining us shortly here as he walks in the door. um, That bottom line, he threw out on his uh, Twitter feed today the craziest possible night. This is wild that he in his mock draft, predicted no draft trades in the top 10 tonight. Yeah, I, I can't believe that. So he then said the But op- it's DJ, so I But he said can. the right. – I know, exactly. Right. He said the opposite of that would be New England trades with Minnesota, trades out, goes from three down to 11. Yep. Okay? And then moves back up into four. New England then moves back up into four and takes the other quarterback that they would want – And then moves, uh, and then the Chargers would then move down from five to 11, and Arizona would pop back up into five and take the receiver that they want. (laughs) So the third, fourth, and fifth overall picks would all be traded out, and the ones who had three and four would be the ones to trade back in for four and five. That would be insane. Did you follow what I just basically said? Well, I have, his, I have his tweet up, so I'm really reading it to make it make sense while you're explaining it. Did I get that right, DJ? Did I get that right? Okay. I did get that right. It's like So New England would go from three down to 11, so Minnesota could take the quarterback that they want. Right. And if they leave the one on the board that New England would be fine with, they would trade into the fourth spot with Arizona, who then would take the 11th spot. And then Arizona, after New England traded all, you know, did, took the quarterback that they wanted, they would trade into the fifth spot to take the receiver that they want. And s- the Chargers would be the ones sitting there at 11. <laughs> to take whoever's left? To, to, I don't know. Uh, obviously, then six, seven, eight, nine, and ten would have right, to go. Right, right. And that is the opposite of nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. But I would want to be in Arizona's draft room tonight for that draft room debate. Because if Monty Austin Fort really has not taken any phone calls and hasn't set the table for any possible trades and parameters and truly is only going to, he's finally, after turning his phone off yeah, for the last it, he's month, turn it back he's going to turn it back. Like, you have oh, 96 hey. messages, you oh, know? Hi. And so he would then start taking these phone calls. Yeah. And if somehow, some way, Jaden Daniels is still on the board, that's the least likely of them all. The most likely of them all, it's McCarthy. It's possible somebody trades up or figures out what DJ is also saying, and we'll bring him on in a second, that it's possible he could go all the way down to 11 and Minnesota doesn't have to move and they get their guy anyway, so why would they have to move up to four? And then you sit there going, well, who else wants J.J. McCarthy? Take some phone calls, and then around three minutes to go, it's like, screw it. That's Marvin Harrison Jr. out there. So let's get him and let's bring him to the desert. And then obviously the charges being on the clock would be the next draft room I'd want to be in. But we can only choose one, and I choose Arizona's. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.